G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Um, we're just going to be uh, having a look at installing MX18. Um, we're going to be looking at some of the uh, newest things available with this. So now I'm going to run through the installer. Now there's a couple of things that we need to have a look at here. I'm going to do a custom install, that's by default anyway. And you choose the main disk, that's my USB running live um, MX at the moment. So now what you can do is you can run the partition tool which is gparted. Now I'm running, I'm going to run this and uh, for a very good reason. I've already installed MX twice now. I'm um, having a bit of a problem with MX booting. Now, very, very first boot, it will boot up. After that, it doesn't. So uh, I'm not sure. I may have to install another uh, another distro that will maintain the um, EFI boot because it definitely doesn't seem to be um, holding it, holding the info on boot for MX for some reason. So let's delete all this and tick that and we'll delete that. Okay, so most importantly what we need to do is uh, go to a device and create partition table and we don't want it to be MS-DOS. We want it to be GPT, that way we can, well, for me anyway, I can create more than four primary partitions, and that allows me to do that. And there's another reason why I'm doing that, and I'll let you know further on in the video. So let's make a new partition. First of all, we'll start off with swap. Now, if you like to be um, absolutely spot on about your, your swap, um, you can go um, 8 gig, oh sorry, 8 times 1024, whoops, is 8192 will make exactly um, 8 gig. 8192 make that Linux swap and add that then we'll go new uh, we'll make it 512 megabytes make it FAT32 and add and then we'll do let's see um, calculator Give it 30 gigs, 30 times 1024, 3720, ext4 and add. So that's what I'm going to create to install MX. Now uh, that's first of all, let's apply that. This is on my Toshiba laptop, so I've um, completely wiped the disk to do that Bunsen Labs install. So I can do whatever I like with this at the moment. It's good. So as you can see here, FAT32's got MSFT data. We want to manage flags. And we want to make it boot. ESP, those two there, close that. Now we should be right to go. Now that boot ESP is very important for EFI booting. So now we can, I might just um, shut the installer down and start again. And this is your welcome screen by the way. Um, 
frequently asked questions, users manual, wiki, tools, takes you to the MX tools. The tweak um, will enable you to change the panel and I believe these options, you get to choose whether you wanna keep those options when installing. I'll just do it after install anyway. Forums, videos, contribute codex and popular apps, which is your package installer. So let's start the installer. So SDA is the only disk I have there. Custom install. Now I'm going to install to SDA3. So you can see it's exactly 30 gig because I gave it the extra. My swap is that one there. Now boot uh, is gonna be root. So Because it's making root as the boot, the root drive, um, I think that's gonna be an issue because it's going to try and boot from the root rather than the SDA2. So let's format that first. Now, um, at this point, um, I've tried unchecking this. It's going to install to ESP, but uh, unchecking it makes no difference. I leave it checked. It highlights this. It doesn't give me any other option for system boot disk. I really want to ins uh, install it to SDA2. Now, if I check that and check ESP, go next, it will install the grub bootloader at SDA2 which is my EFI boot. However, um, it'll boot once, but it won't boot anymore after that. It tells me there's no operating system available. So I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to close the installer at this point. I'm going to run it again. I think there's uh, one th very important thing that I missed out on. So let's just run through this again. Change keyboard settings. You can do that here. Now, one of the newest things available in MX is um, this MX installer here, which is based on Gazelle installer, um, now includes the Lux encrypted root and home and swap partitions. So I have to think that that's this here. Um, let's have another look on the next page. Okay, so that what you can do here is let's choose our swap. It's there. So now you've got the option to encrypt here. And you've got the option to choose which type of file system you want as well. So home is root. So if you was to choose a separate home, which I cannot do because I don't have another partition uh, enabled there. So let's just um, close this again. Let's just run that installer again. No, actually, um, yep. Yeah. Let's run the partition tool. Now I'm going to make a couple more I'll make one more um, boot partition. Make that FAT32. Add that, and then we'll make another 
Um, let's see, we'll make this slightly different. I like to make my discs different in size so I can recognize them. So I'll make this uh, 29 times 1024, 29696. XT4 and add. Let's apply that. Just want to do a few different things on this uh, install to make sure we capture some of the new things that MX Linux has put in place. Um, and this FAT32 will manage flags and we'll make that a boot ESP as well. Boot ESP. And that's done. So now what we can do is let's close installer again and start it back up keyboard setting yep let's close there we go next that's my disk custom install so now we have a choice of two disks there that's we're choosing this one now this is where you can choose your home partition if you had a separate partition. Um, you could choose that one and you can encrypt your root and your home partition. That's what we wanted to look at. Um, doesn't allow you to encrypt swap. So that's where you can get that choice and you can also choose a different partition uh, file system for that one there if you wish but on this occasion I'm going to choose root um, because I just want the partition to be um, my home folder to be part of the operating system not separate and I don't really encrypt anyway but that's the options there So we've got our swap. So see boot. I can choose that disk there, but there's nothing on there, so I, I can't choose that. Okay, so boot is probably just choosing which which disk you want to boot from, I would say. I'm not quite sure what that does. But let's move on. Let's format that. Okay, so we are up at the uh, boot method, which is the grub for Linux and Windows. Uh, check that, because I know unchecking it doesn't work anyway. And if you uncheck that, it will not give you this option here. So yes, we want to uh, install grub to the bootloader at SDA2, definitely. Um, I'll just call that uh, mx-tosh for Toshiba, so I know where it's at. And um, English, AU, and Australia. I like 24 hour time. I'm not sure what this one is. Server settings, okay. Okay, so let's go next. Username and my passwords, and next. You can choose auto login from here, and you can choose to save any live disk changes. So if you put this panel on the bottom, make a few changes, it'll. You can choose to save all of that, and it'll be done once you boot into your fresh install. I'll do that later. And that's it, we finish. No, I don't want to reboot now. So that the install is complete after that, believe it or not. It's that easy. So I will um, boot into MX Linux. 
and I believe I can only boot once um, because after that first boot it won't allow me to boot in so I may have to install another operating system to give me the uh, MX Linux on on a boot screen um, because I believe that's how I was running it once before. See you in the fresh install. So here we are back in MX Linux um, after install. We have, um, let's have a look, five new updates available. So let's first of all do that. Um, you've got these options here, automatically answer yes to all prompts, automatically close terminal window when upgrade complete. So I might just, I, I don't normally check those, but I might do that. And we click the upgrade button and away we go. Now I'm the only one using this computer normally, so um, checking those is a good idea uh, if you're using, if you're the only one using it. So if you're um, if you're the if you have other people using your computer and you don't want people to randomly go and click upgrade, then you obviously wouldn't check automatically yes because you'd have to prompt for a password. That would be this scenario there if you didn't want to check those. Okay, so we're going to be looking at MX Tools. Now, um, simple screen recorder is very easy to set up here and, and because I installed it on the live disk, it was still here after install. That's a nice little touch, that. So um, I didn't make any changes to the desktop itself, but I did install simple screen recorder prior and it's still there after install, so I didn't have to install it again. That's, that's pretty cool. So we have um, some, oh, we're going to have another update as well. So you get to see the little update uh, pop-up box there. So we'll just upgrade that. So the main things I wanted to look at for MX is... Um, Let's have a look at the package installer. Now, I'm um, just reading their website. Um, they have uh, added flat packs. Um, and apparently the MX package installer itself has been, um, has had some improvements made and it's a lot quicker. Uh, it's got a faster performance within this uh, installer and also the flat packs and the popular apps entry has had uh, th which is this one here so what they've done there is they've got uh, the for example browsers they've added Google Chrome um, and also on the um, messaging I think it is you've got Skype 64-bit only discord as well so that's nice to see. So the popular apps has had a few. That, that's the only ones that are mentioned. There might be some more. It's hard to keep up. There's a lot of popular apps in there. So um, this thing has been... Let's click on Stable Repo. So that was pretty quick. Um, let's try the Test Repo. That was very quick. And let's try the back ports. Back ports took a little bit longer, but uh, still quicker than what it used to be for sure. So they're all uh, really, really much quicker than what they used to be. So that's good. And you've got flat packs. Um, we need our root password for that. And you've got a whole heap of flat packs there. 
500 in total. So I'm sure there's something for everybody to find if they're not happy with the um, with what's available in the um, in the standard repos because um, uh, we are on Debian, so it does uh, you know packages are a little bit uh, behind normally when it comes to Debian. Um, now, if we just have a look at uh, Internet and Firefox is up to Firefox 64. Firefox 64 VLC is up to 3.03 .03. um, Clementine is 1.3.1 Now the one that does surprise me is the um, Thunderbird. He's only at 52.9.1. So I know the 60 is out. So I'm a bit surprised that MX doesn't have 60 in there. I'm not sure why that is. They, maybe they missed the boat on that one. That's uh, rather interesting, I must say. So what do we got? 52.9.1. So I'm quite surprised it's not up to 60, but I'm sure there must be a very good reason for that. And you have the LibreOffice, which is up to 6.0.1.1. And some of the XFCE components have been updated. XFCE settings. I'm not sure in what way, but uh, let's have a look. looks pretty nice anyway so you can just have a look at all the shortcuts there and then you've got your file manager which is Thuna 1.6.15 now um, let's go back to so you can have a look at the settings there I, I won't go through all of them there's too many but there's a lot there now, if there's anything new there, I probably wouldn't know. But it seems to be everything sort of consolidated in the one place anyway, which is nice. Now, the other thing is the Codex Installer. Now, the Codex Installer has been updated to install the S3 Texture Packs. Um, so what I might do is just jump on to Firefox. Um, we go to the MX Linux blog and click on MX Continuum. And this is where I'm reading from. Now if we have a look uh, here, the MX Codex updated to, to install updated S3 texture packs which is important for Valve and Steam games in particular. So that's really cool. So do you assume legal responsibility for downloading these codecs? Yes, I do. So I'm assuming that somewhere in that codex install is the new S3 texture packs. So there's many, many, many additional package and ISO repository mirrors via MX Repo Manager. There's some new artwork. Um, automatic selection of appropriate driver for most Broadcom chipsets. In most cases, no user intervention is required. Light locker used for screen locking is available in the MX package installer. New Conky configs. New ability to use Grub themes via MX boot options. Oh, Grub themes, okay. With a set of choices available. So if we go back to the codecs have been installed. Okie dogs. Boot options, it must be this one here. 
There you go. Enable theme. So you've got plenty of themes to choose from there. So that's the one there. That's what we're looking for. So the light down greeter, uh, the login screen now has locale selection options. Thuna custom action updates. So you can use default text editor for edit as root rather than a hard coded editor. Remove change owner to actions. Yep, so uh, you can't change owner to root. That's a good thing. And many thanks to the artists who contributed and well, artists and contributors who provided the wallpapers, icons, bootloader screens for this release. And Tech Designs was one of them. Ghost 67. I didn't see Ghosty's name there before. Oh, good work, Ghosty as well as many other who submitted to our Community Wallpapers website. Let's have a look at the uh, wallpapers. I think that one there is one from Ghosty, I'm pretty sure. I remember him making that. Um, it would be nice if they had... Oh yeah, they got... Uh, let's have a look. It doesn't have any names against, does it? Be nice if we could um, work out who did which wallpaper. It'd be nice. Got some really nice wallpapers there, I must say. So some buttons don't have minimize, some do. So the settings buttons don't have any minimize. Okay. So if we have a look at, uh, if we go to file system and we can open root thuna um, let's just say we go to Etsy edit as root so you can edit that as root and put in your password so that's handy so you don't have to open the folder as root you can edit the actual file as root that's that's always very handy to do if you can do that that's that's a that's pretty good So let's um, have a look at the MX tools again. I shall make a slight change on this. Um, we'll go to tweak. And we can move our panel horizontal to the bottom and apply that. That's the way I like there. I'm not sure what's, oh yeah, that's all right. Compositor, you can choose Compton. Reset light dam logins to system default. That's always a good choice. Reset Thuna custom right click actions to system defaults. Use Intel driver instead of default mode setting driver. Okay. So yes, I noticed single click is um, is on by default. It's an interesting choice. There's been a lot of debate about single click lately. I don't mind single click. And the other thing is, um, if you want to choose many things, if you just highlight that and then go away, and if you press the shift button and then hit that, it'll highlight all of those. So that works pretty well. We've got the clock here. We can probably update the clock. You've got some... Um, common codes down here to show you how to set your clock and so forth. You can choose to show the frame or not show the frame. You've got your live USB maker, your snapshot. We've looked at boot options, you've got uh, boot repair. Um, I wonder if that will help me out, boot repair. See, I'm not on MBR. Master boot record. Yeah, I'm not using master boot record, so I won't bother with that. 
uh, menu editor so you can edit your menus from here okay user manager modify user account group membership you can change your user password here Nvidia driver installer we've done the codex we've got the conky data has been updated so we can choose different conkies here if we like or was that just a oh no that's probably just a um, changes to the active conky okay network assistant select sound sound is working okay so I'm not messing with that system sounds tweak we've looked at welcome we've seen system keyboard system locales Fix GPG keys if you've got an issue with that. Uh, repo manager. Australia Melbourne. Yep, yeah, it's working alright for me. So, quick system info. We've got the 419 kernel. kernel. Press any key to close, and you've got the iDevice mounter. Don't have an iPhone, so I can't try that out. And interesting choice, they've got the uh, login um, button there, which was up the top before. Uh, Clementine's still running. And you've got your sound. If you right click sound, you've got open mixer and preferences. So you've got some preferences for sound there and also open mixer. So if we go back to MX Tools and go to Package Installer, you've got some desktop environments. Here I've tried installing the GNOME base, but unfortunately, um, there's some packages that are out of date if we have a look at that it says it's finished successfully but it's not well probably what it's supposed to do the following packages have unmet dependencies so it depends gnome shell 3.19.92 but is not going to be installed depends this one here gnome session depends gnome shell 3.19 not going to be installed so there's a few um, unmet dependencies there for installing GNOME because I was running GNOME on MX17 that was working really well uh, but unfortunately it doesn't want to install on this one so the one thing I would like to ask Dolphin and I hope he watches this video um, can we get a more advanced um, GNOME desktop installed so a more up to date GNOME desktop I just wonder not sure. Debian backports. If we look for GNOME, no, nah, there's nothing there. So uh, we go desktop. Mate desktop. Hmm. It's probably the only one that's in is probably the unstable repo, I would say. Which is the, uh, I can't remember how all the Debian works. is too complex. <laughs> There's uh, Sid and, and all the others. There's probably in one of those. But I probably wouldn't want to mess with that anyway. Only with what MX uh, makes available is probably best to mess with. So I'm not sure what's going on with the known desktop there. 
I did uh, on my previous install before I installed over this I did install the KDE version so that installed fine I haven't tried budgie desktop yet I may give the budgie a try uh, maybe running budgie on MX because I'm not a huge I like XFCE but you got to install Compton and things like that um, to stop screen tearing I'm not sure whether the budgie desktop will have no screen tearing out of the box but um, I can get XFC up and running fine but uh, I do like the budgie desktop so I might give that a try and you've got additional wallpapers here from previous MX installs and you've got some window managers so comp here so I was, I was looking at uh, Linux and other stuff Dave over there he was messing around with Compiz, but he, I don't think he installed this one. I think he installed another one. Um, and I think that may have been in maybe one of the repos, I think. I'm not sure where he got that from. I'd have to watch his video again. But Compiz is probably the best. Yeah, Compiz Fusion and all that. Yeah. I'll have to have a look at what he done there. Compiz is probably, I know people say it's outdated, but you could probably do KWind. I don't know whether KWind works on XFCE. Hmm, may work. KWind X11, that was working on uh, Lubuntu. So may work on here as well. Interesting, I might give that a try and see if I can get that going. That's not a bad one. So that is MX18 install and look around. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.